So here is the opening shot. And here's a top down showing the opening camera placement. Now, this is an interesting sequence because the director chose to shoot each of the four scenes in roughly one single shot. In this particular scene, it's all shot with a moving camera and it's done rather subtly. In this selection of six shots, we see the camera starts on Pop pouring coffee and then he hears the cash register bell. So he starts over to the register. The camera follows him by dawdling slightly left and panning at the same time. Uh, if you'll recall our lesson on blocking and staging, this seemingly simple shot is actually rather complex. Pop has been blocked from one zone to another while the camera tracks with him from one customer to another. You can see here in this view that it's a very slight move. Pop takes care of the customer at the register, and then with the same pot of coffee, he serves Eric. The camera continues to follow Pop's with a pan to the left and a slight pullback. And here is the top down showing how the camera is moved. Personally, I think this is a very clever and economical way to show Pop frantically trying to keep shop all by himself on a busy morning. Of course, this is all underscored by Eric asking Pop where Stella has disappeared. Lo and behold, Stella does show up, and the camera follows her as she moves across the room. Now here's some interesting blocking and staging. We start with Stella being blocked in depth, and then she moves across the frame in the background. In the foreground, we stage the camera from one person, Eric, to another person, Pops. The camera actually doesn't move much. It pulls back slightly, then pans right. And here's another top-down showing where the camera is when Stella enters the cafe. And you can see how the camera is pulled back slightly and it's panned a bit to the right. Incidentally, this is all the same lens. They didn't use zoom lenses in those days. I think uh, 32 was used for this shot. The camera continues to follow Stella over to the coffee dispenser where she grabs a cup. Uh, Pop tells her he has something for her. At this point, the camera stops and briefly holds the on Eric and Stella in a two-shot. Again, Stella is blocked in depth, followed by another zone-to-zone -zone move. By now, you probably surmise that there's a pattern that's developed where the camera only moves when the actors move and it locked off when there is a dialogue bit. As we've covered in an earlier lesson, this type of camera movement is known as motivated camera move. And here is a top-down showing you that the camera has panned to left and then pushed in for a tighter two-shot. The camera now tracks left to follow Stella. Let's move over to the counter where she is met by Eric. Again, the camera locks off for the dialogue bit. And here is a top down showing you that the camera tracks slightly left and then pushes in and pans slightly to the left in order to tighten up the framing. This bit starts out as a two shot and Pop comes in briefly to make it a three shot. What's interesting here is that Pop is placed in the background suggesting that he's an insignificant character in this conversation. When he leaves, the space between Eric and Stella grows bigger as the dialogue starts to heat up. Then we cut to an over the shoulder of Eric, quickly followed by reverse on Stella. What's interesting here is the director doesn't necessarily cut with the dialogue. Much of Eric's lines are delivered off screen as we focus on Stella's reaction to his taunting. The director bookends the over the shoulder sequence by returning to Eric. Then he, we go back to the two shot of Eric and Stella. The front door bell rings and Stella goes back to work by fetching a urn of coffee and a cup. The camera tracks right with Stella moving over to the coffee dispenser. And here is a top down. We see the camera has tracked right with Stella. As Stella settles into her final position, the camera pans left, pulls back so we can see both Stella and Mark in the frame. Here we see the camera move with Stella over to the counter where she serves Mark coffee. Another example of zone to zone blocking. Finally, the camera locks off in a two shot. The director uses a lap dissolved to transition between two scenes, which is typical of the period. This is a way of showing a long passage of time. 
Note that the camera starts locked off in the beginning of the new scene. This makes the transition flow better. Once Eric walks into the medium shot, the camera dollies forward with him until it settles into a three shot of June, Carla, and Eric. At one point, Carla leaves the frame, um, leaving a gap between June and Eric. What is interesting here is the director has established a motif of space. Twice now, he has used space between the characters to define their relationships. As the camera tracks back with Eric and June, um, the space between them closes until they climb into the car with Carla. There, the space between them is about as tight as it can be. Again, the director uses a lap dissolve to transition between two scenes. Uh, car shots like these are typically done on a set and shot against a rear screen projection system. A lot of times the car was sawed in half and shot straight on from the front of the vehicle. The shot highlighted here is a three shot taken from just outside the passenger door. It puts our three characters in tight quarters with the protagonist and the antagonist seated right next to each other, creating a little discomfort for Carla. When June leaves the car, she gives a little breather space between Carla and Eric. But psychologically, the director doesn't give us much time for relief. He immediately cuts in closer, once again suggesting the discomfort felt by Carla. What follows here is the manipulative dialogue between Eric and Carla. The director shot the scene twice, once in a single bench, open top, and then another in a double bench, closed top automobile. The blocking is nearly identical in each scene, yet the two different perspectives play very differently to the audience. Seated side by side, Eric and Clara can see each other, making it difficult to hide their faces and thus their thinking. On the other hand, seated one in front of the other gives the impression that Eric and Carla could be conversing in two separate rooms. The space between them is further divided by the windshield partition. We are not sure how much each is actually telling the truth. By placing the camera closer to the actors, we see the nuances of their performances. We catch their moments. If you've noticed the way the director cuts, the emphasis is placed on Eric. There's not a single angle where we don't see his face. So it's clear that the director is following this conversation from Eric's perspective. By the time we get to World War II, we can see that the language of cinema was getting quite sophisticated. Many of the same basic elements of film language were still used, but much more subtly. I would imagine that it would have taken a director at this time roughly three, maybe four days to shoot this sequence of four scenes. I think all of the stage shots would have been done in two days. Uh, the cafe would have taken the longest, but still with very good crew, it could have been done in one day. Of course, all the rear screen projection would have been second unit photography and shot ahead of principal photography.